All right, friends, let's talk about tides and seasons. Uh, if you look at the picture at the top, and this is the basic, I mean, super core of how tides work. Uh, tides are caused by the gravitational pull between the Earth and the moon. Um, because the Earth has the water, uh, the moon tends to pull some of the water outwards, and it kind of makes this uh, bulge. If you look here, uh, bulge in the circle here. Uh, this is just basically like a, a protrusion or a dent outwards or like a bump. Um, and the bulge happens on both sides. So it's not just on the side that the moon is happening. It happens on both sides, the side closest to the moon and the side farthest away from the moon. Uh, because this happens, because the moon is moving around the earth and the earth is rotating while this is all happening, um, two tides happen every day, uh, twice a day. So there's actually like four quote unquote tides that happen. But let's look at the specific ones that are uh, related to the moon cycle itself. So we have spring tides uh, that are, these are kind of like our strongest of our tides. Uh, that doesn't mean that they're bigger tides. It just means that they're the springness of it is that it's the depth. So there are higher high tides and lower low tides. Uh, this spring tide happens when the earth, the sun, and the moon are all in a straight line, either as in the pictures above, it's the sun, the earth, and the moon, or the sun, the moon, and the earth. Uh, this is where the gravitational forces between the sun and the moon affect the tides equally. So it kind of amplifies the high tides and the low tides. Uh, the spring tides, and this is super critical, happen during a full moon or a new moon. So those spring tides happen with full and new. Uh, the neap tide is the other one that's specific to the moon phases. Um, neap tides are kind of weak. Um, the way that I remember that is neap and weak have the same vowels in the middle and they kind of sound similar. Uh, the neap tide occurs when the gravitational um, force between the moon and the sun are at their their lowest. Uh, it's called perpendicular which just means that it makes like a cell. It's a, a right angle so it makes a seven or an L shape. Um, let me see if I can remember if we can do this. Pins purple because it's pretty. So I have a seven or an L depending on how you look at it up here. Uh, the neap tides occur during um, quarter moons. So during first quarter and third quarter. Uh, one of the things that uh, one of the students two years ago um, said that NEEP has four letters in it and there are three celestial bodies or three circles. You have the sun, the earth, and the moon. So that's three. Three plus seven, or yeah, three plus four gives me seven, which is the perpendicular shape. So that's just another way to help hopefully get you to remember these. So I'm going to put this link in the description down below. Uh, so hopefully it'll go in, but it's the brain pop about moon phases and tides and how they're related. Uh, this picture is really good because it shows the bulge and what it really looks like. Um, so this blue is the lunar tide, which gives us our neap and spring. Um, so if you look with the neap tide, it's that perpendicular, that L shaped or seven shape, um, where the lunar tide and the solar tide, that's the blue and the yellow, um, kind of cross each other out. So that way, that's another way to look at why the tides are so much lower. Um, and then here with the spring tides, you can see that both tide poles um, or gravitational poles are happening in the same directions. So that helps amplify it. So this is a DE video. I'll put the link in the description. It is uh, shows, it does show the actual difference between a spring tide and a neap tide. So you get a visual of how that looks. Um, you'll need to draw and label these two pictures because they're very simplistic and put this lunar bulge or moon pole as this blue ring. So make sure you label those in there. Uh, this is the Bay of Fundy. And um, it sounds like it's fun, but it's kind of scary sometimes. This is at its lowest low tide, and then this is at its um, normal high tide. 
So you can see these rocks in the Bay of Fundy. They let people move and walk around down here. Uh, you get a perspective of how, how big this area is. And then this is that same area once the high tide has come in. So this happens within a couple hours. Uh, day and night cycle, this is going to go pretty quick because hopefully you understand how the day and the night works. Uh, the earth rotates and that's how we get our day and night cycles. Um, rotation versus revolution. This is kind of important, so if you aren't paying attention, pay attention and write this down. Rotation is the spin on an axis. So this is if you were seated, seated in your chair and I said, um, Kevin, um, please rotate and face forward. So you're not moving from your chair, you're moving in one spot and you rotate. So the earth rotates once a day and then once, that takes uh, 24 hours roughly for it to rotate in its full rotation. A revolution is where, and the E got cut off, a, an object goes around or orbits another object. So this is if you were to revolve around the room and pick up all the papers. Uh, so the earth revolves around the sun um, every 365 days. There's uh, some decimal points there that helps with the leap year. But for our purposes, it's 365 days. <clears throat> our axis is special because it is um, the only one with a 23.5 degree axis of rotation. So this white line here would be if we were at a straight, um, like zero axis of rotation from our equator. But because our axis is tipped over a little bit, um, it causes our equator to not be super uh, like flat. It's not like a latitude line, it's tilted. And so this gives us a little bit different time, I'm not time, um, temperature zones and gives us differences in our seasons. The earth does uh, wobble a little bit. It doesn't spin straight like a top. Like some people use a top to show how the earth rotates. But because it's tilted on its axis, it has a little bit of wobble. Um, we see, if you ever go out in the really dark of night um, and lay down and look up, you see the stars kind of look like they wiggle a little bit. Uh, our period of wobbling or shaking is um, 25,725 years. That's for it to make this full, if you look down here, for it to make the full circle. I will put this, um, it's a, a GIF uh, link where you can watch how the earth would then wobble. And um, this was discovered uh, by the guy Hypernicus. You may want to look him up in your famous scientist link on Edmodo. So this is, that's called precession. It's not just the wobble, but it's, it actually does have a name called precession. And this is another um, picture of how that would look. So if you were here um, on the North Pole and you were looking up, you would see that the pole, the stars look like they kind of make a circle. Uh, we have one of these in our classroom. If you want, come see me and I'll let you look at it. Equinoxes and solstices. Uh, the first one is the equinox because it's kind of simple. Um, the vernal or spring, we'll usually just call it spring equinox, is around in March. Um, this is where the sun crosses the equator and gets a full, like, t it's most even daytime, nighttime uh, time frames. Um, so this is where day and night would be almost equal, like 12 hours a day, 12 hours a night. Um the summer solstice is in June, and this is where the sun is its farthest north that it would go. So if you were in um, Alaska, you would see the most amount of sun during this time, almost 24 hours. I think that it's like 22 and a half hours of sunlight. Um, then let's go looking at autumnal or fall equinox. This is in September. Uh, this is almost exactly the same as the spring or vernal equinox where we have the same amount of daytime and nighttime across the equator. So this is an even distribution of day and night times. The winter solstice is in December, and this is where the sun is its farthest south. So if you were in the south pole, you would see almost 24 hours of daylight. But in Alaska, uh, where it would be winter, right, and we, if you were to go to Alaska, at the winter solstice, you would only see maybe an hour and a half of daylight, and then the rest of it would be dark. So this picture, um, I would pause it here if you need to and kind of copy some of these things down. The spring equinox, 
is when spring begins in the northern hemisphere. The winter solstice is when winter begins. Um, fall equinox is when fall begins. And the summer solstice is when the summer begins. Um, these two pictures here show you how the sunlight is different between the southern and the northern hemispheres during the summer solstice and the winter solstice. So if you're visual, you might pause that there. Uh, solar time, um, this is just talking about how the differences in solar days or sun days vary. Um, most of this has to do with how fast we rotate around the sun. And um, our speed is pretty uh, constant. We don't really speed up or change. Um, however, our placement in the sun is a little different. Um, if you were to, to Google Kepler's second law, it tells us that we have we move through space faster in January because we are uh, it's actually closest to the sun then if you looked at our orbital path remember the orbits of our planet are not circles but ellipses are almost like oblongs um, so I would google Kepler's second law and look at the pictures and see if that helps get a better image of it uh, some breakdowns of the seasons. I'll put this link in the descriptions. I'm pretty sure it's a brain pop. There's the brain pop seasons. Uh, and then our actual seasons here. This is just uh, to see. Remember that it's not a flat plane. Um, they've drawn it. Some of the pictures we see, it looks like a tilted um, picture, like the, the orbital plane is tilted. Um, it's actually more like a flat disk. It moves at the same level around the Earth. We don't move up in space and down in space. I know that's kind of confusing. Uh, hopefully we hit that in class. Uh, the season's mis misconceptions. These are things that people think are true, but are really not. Um, the sunlight uh, strikes, one of them is that the tilt of the Earth doesn't affect our seasons. So if you were to look back at the picture Here and look at these guys and how they move. The sunlight hits more directly at the equators, and so you get more sunlight here, um, and then it hits more directly, especially in the summer solstice. You can see how there's more sun that would reach this northern hemisphere than in the southern hemisphere. So let's go back. So in the summer, here's you can see the rays a little easier. The uh, like Texas is right about here so you can see in the summer we have almost direct um, exposure to the sun so as we're exposed to the sun more during the summer this gives it if you look down here at the bottom this causes warmer weather and longer days especially uh, during this I mean we all love summertime because we get to be off but if you notice in the summertime we have much longer days of play like you can go outside at seven o'clock or eight o'clock at night and it's still daylight however if we were to let me skip ahead if we were to go into the winter time and you look at like december it gets dark um by like five o'clock it's starting to to look like it's the sun is going down and then by seven it's dark so uh with our summer and winter tilts uh, this gives Alaska and Iceland um, some long times of daylight and nighttime because of their position on our planet. So the farther up north you are, the more extreme, and the farther down you are on the poles, uh, the more extreme your daytime and nighttime cycle will be. So winter, um, this is the southern hemisphere is leaning towards the sun, so the northern hemisphere is leaning away from the sun on its axis. Uh, then the northern hemisphere would have shorter days and cooler weather. Now this is all reversed. Get another picture. Um, go on, Thelma. So here, on the, back to this picture. If it's winter in the northern hemisphere, then it is summer in the southern hemisphere. It's vice versa. If it's summer in the northern hemisphere, then it's winter in the southern hemisphere. So just remember, that's I think it's a couple test questions on the CBA. Um, whatever it is on the northern hemisphere, which is where we are, it would be the opposite in the southern hemisphere. So I'm going to leave it on this page as we close out. Um, I hope this has not been too confusing. If so, please review the links in the description below and go through those sites because they're going to have um, 
some smaller bits explained into longer pieces. So I'll see you around the hallways.